A lot of videos today. It's a beautiful day out. Today's the Sabbath. No church tonight because they're cleaning the building because of the sickness and stuff. And so uh, it's going to be busy, busy, busy. Um, Jesus is the offering and we are the temple. Many people say that because of those sacrificial laws are all done away with. Well, they're not. They're done away with in the sense they cannot be done properly according to God's law because the temple is not there, the Levitical priests are not there. See, the technicalities, but the spirit of the sacrificial laws are still there. Okay, and I'm going to show you what the scripture is plainly clear and understand that Jesus is the offering and we are the temple. We are the temple. We are spiritually to sacrifice in our lives. You'll see all through scripture where we are still sacrificing ourselves daily to him, to the Father, to glorify the Son. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Father God, I ask that your Holy Spirit will work with us and, and teach us and help us. Help me to share this clearly and help me to apply it to my life. Thank you for all that you're doing and for the man, your word is so precious. I've been diving in it, it's just I just can't get enough of it. Thank you, Lord, for all the, the teachings and, and your word and the clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Jesus is the offering, and we are the temple. Again, people say that, that the sacrificial laws aren't in effect, but they are, but they can't be done. But God explains how he wants to have it done. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. We'll back up a hair here. Do, not, do you not know that you are God's temple? How <laughs> much more blatant. And that the God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. That kind of puts suicide out. That is exactly why I did not commit suicide four or five years ago when I had my lead poisoning. Because I knew what the scripture says. I don't care what people think or feel. I got to go by what the Bible says. It, it flat out says we're God's temple. Okay? I mean, that's end of conversation. Hebrew 5, 9 and 10. And being made perfect, he, Jesus, became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. See, there's a condition. This once saved, always saved is stupid. He is the source to our salvation to all who obey him. That's how we respond to him. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. It'll be never ending. It'll be never ending on his side. But we need to choose and respond to him. 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourself, like the living stones, are being built up in a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus. We are to be a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Our lives are supposed to change. Our hearts are to change. How much clearer is that? 1 Peter 3, 13 and 15. By the way, Peter was with Jesus, remember? <clears throat> now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, in your hearts, in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. It's all about the heart. It's all about the heart, people. I've been preaching that forever. Hebrews 13, 15. Through him, Christ. Through him. Then let us continually, continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of, of lips that not acknowledge his name. Through him, then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. He's God. Romans 12, 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God. This is a memory verse. 
to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. When the King James says it's reasonable service. I like that one. To present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. How do we get holy other than studying the law and applying it to our lives? We can be righteous before God. Jesus set us free. Hebrews 7, 11. Now, if perfection has been obtained through the Levitical priesthood, what further need would we have been for another priest to rise after the order of Melchizedek? Rather than one named after the order of Aaron? See, Jesus fulfilled the law because he obeyed all of it. That's why he's a high priest. Jesus had to obey the law for himself. He had to obey the Father and make it all the way through as a perfect priest for us and to be a perfect sacrifice. Hebrews 7.16 verifies this. Who, was become, who has become a priest? Not on the basis of legal requirement concerning bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. His life was indestructible. Death cannot hold him because he did not sin. He obeyed God's laws. That's how we get our powers, by through Christ obeying his law. Hebrews 7.18 For on the one hand, a former commandment is set aside because a former, not all of them, a former is set aside because of its weakness and useless. But on the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. He's our better hope, a better priesthood. We no longer have priesthood that sacrifice. That's why it says the former commandment is set aside. We don't need the priest to offer it for us. Hebrews 7, 22 and 25 through 25. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. It doesn't say guarantee of eternal life. It's through him. But a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in their office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Constantly. Consistently. Yeah, constantly, consistently. <laughs> he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him. See, right there, a, people keep missing this. The uttermost through those who draw. You, we always is drawing toward God through him. It's always our response to God. It's always in that order. Since he always lives to make intercession for us. Oh, consequently, consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him. And he always makes intercession for them. The conditional. So it's, it's a key, people. Hebrews 8, 6. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old as the covenant. He mediates is better since it is exact, enacted on better promises. He's just a better priest. He is standing in our seat because the other seat, priest didn't work out. Hebrews 9.22 Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. But without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. He shed his blood for us in order that we have forgiveness of sin. Hebrews 9, 9b. According to this arrangement, gifts and sacrifice are offered that cannot perfect the conscience of the worshiper. In the past days, no matter what people try to do, it could not affect their conscience of the worshiper. Jesus dying for me affected my consciences, my conscious, conscience, consciousness. Romans 4, 10, 4. Romans 10, 4. Here it is. For Christ is the end, or the point, or the goal of the uttermost. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness is to everyone who believes. He's the goal of the law. For Christ is the goal of the law, for righteousness to everyone who believes. <sighs> that is so clear. How did I miss it all these years? Romans 6, 22b. The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end or goal is eternal life. 
The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its goal is eternal life. The whole goal of me walking and following Christ is eternal life. Is eternal life in Him. We're the temple. We're still making sacrifices. You can study up the different sacrifices, thankful sacrifice. What is the sacrifice we do? We repent and, and cry out to Jesus to forgive us if we sin. If we hurt someone, we go and make it right with them. We're still doing the different sacrifices that, that all the other ones were, were done for. And so it's just a different form of it, but we're honoring the Spirit. It's like they're a shadow of things to come. They're a shadow. You walk in the shadow. The shadow gives you an idea of how it should be done. See? Praise God.